I remember a number of times uh, sitting in Gamble's studio and having the people around me who had been there for a couple of years before me talking about the big look, the big this, the big that, the big impression. <laughs> I've never been so buffaloed by the idea of the big look. Uh, but uh, it, is a, it is a phrase that's, um, that's certainly got, come into the Gamble studio and was a Boston school expression. So I like your question, Kevin. What's the best way to maintain the big look in a painting? So I put you, I'd put you in the category of trying to sort of sort that out. It's become self-evident as you work and try to get something we'd call the big look. It's another word for it is the big general impression. Um, and uh, you might even refer to phrases like the general unity, the big, the big unity, uh, things like that. But um, I'll answer this question because it applies to the Impressionist, and I'm going to give you a list of points um, I don't usually do that, but I want to make sure I'm relatively definitive on this. And hopefully I won't come up with, um, I ho hopefully I'll, I'll remember other things that I didn't think of on this list. I just put this list together in the last few minutes. And then how do you maintain the visual appearances of things as the human eye sees them versus the way a camera sees them? Um, that in itself is a big old question. How do you maintain the visual appearance of things as the human eye sees them versus the way a camera sees them? Um, cameras, you know, are funny because they see things in whatever way you set the camera to see them. And uh, arguably, you could say that about the human eye as well. The eye can be set to, uh, you know, like you can, you can hyper zoom in on whatever you're looking at. Like you look at me really hard and you'll see everything go fuzzy just like a camera. So it depends on what you mean by that, Kevin. So what, I, what most his, painting historically has been, in fact, I think, I, I'd say virtually 100%. I mean, how close can we get to 100% uh, of the, of the uh, painting in the Western world has been what I call a unified field of vision, where you treat the, where the camera isn't in focus or out of focus or anything like that. It's simultaneous focus, and you get a unified field. So, um, uh, so maintaining that unified field, though, uh, is is um, that after which you're striving, okay? So I don't know what else to say to you on that point. How do you maintain the visual appearance of things as the human eye sees them? You could look at nature as it is, and uh, uh, as with your own eyes, the human eye sees things a thousand ways. That's my fundamental point, just like the camera can be adjusted in a lot of different ways. I mean, we can do things a camera can't do. For example, we can use binocular vision in the sense that we can see we can see we can see that there are two images in front of us by making both your eyes go slightly straight. You can get a wobble of a double image, that sort of thing. Do we really want to be doing that kind of stuff? Remember, you got to be considering your viewer. Your viewer is going to be looking at it and wanting to treat it like nature, so that he can do whatever interpreting he wants with it. One of the things to keep remembering is when you paint a painting, so it does something like a camera does, that becomes a significant part of the subject. And our founder, I mean, the founders, <laughs> uh, much as I admire them, they, <laughs> our, our um, early antecedents were always painting a sort of a, a equality of vision. You know, you paint the still life object, you paint the person, you paint the chair, you paint them, all of them in, in a relatively clear focus. So there was, it would be the equivalent of a of a, of a camera shot where everything is in simultaneity of focus. Um, and we've, we've found over time that that's the best, that's the one we as viewers appreciate the most and we don't get sucked into somebody's peculiarities. Um, people have said that Sargent and other people uh, see like through a camera and make fuzzy edges, fuzzy at the edges that it would be if you, if you looked that way, if you just stared right at, like you put your focus right at the central part and uh, so you could not even see the other part. And that same conversation goes on around Paxson, who was having that discussion with himself, and I guess messing around a bit. Um, so, uh, but I'm belaboring that. Uh, we are wanting to get a simultaneous vision so that the screen, so that every part of, the, of, of my hand here can be seen while every part of my hand, face can be seen, while every book in the background can be seen. Right? There's no focus thing. It's just whatever distance you're standing will cause certain things to, to read better. 
but you still will look at one while you're looking at the other and get that relationship, okay? Let's, let's, let's drop that for now. If you want me to dig into that in some other way or ask a more specific question, we'll do that. What the main point here today is to talk about the best way to maintain the big look in a painting, and that's what I really want to focus on. So I'll give you, I'm going to show you a, a picture that I've done uh, and we'll, that we can use to talk about. Uh, we've got to figure, Mr. Producer, we've got to figure out how to make this thing be a little more uh, friendly. It doesn't move as fast as I would like it to. So I have this image right here that we could talk about. This is uh, a recent painting and um, that I've done. It's fairly large, uh, you know, 50 inches or so uh, range. And, uh, and uh, so, so I had to stand back quite a distance to even have, uh, you know, a unified look. So that's the first point is get back a good distance. I didn't include that in this list, so you're already getting a bonus. Uh, but get back to a distance where you can actually see plainly uh, the thing as a whole, okay? If you're looking over here and you can't see what's over here, you're, you're too close. Even looking at this screen, if you don't back up enough looking at the screen, you won't be able to see what's here while you're over, aware of over this, over here. So if you, can, if you pop your eyes, just maintain a unity of vision and don't look in focusing on anything, you should be able to see the field simultaneously. And that's the most important thing for you to be able to do. And of course, bigger than anything else is for you to have an awareness of it, right? You can say you're seeing it, but are you seeing it in a way in which you're aware of how things are relating to each other in that big field? So I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, but let's just go back to that very first point or the first set of points here. Uh, that's not it. Keep going. There we are. All right. Impressionism. Impressionist unity is the result of parts participating in their function to the whole, right? Um, so your first job in painting is to preconceive and just take these points, these bullet points, preconceive it, the thing as a whole, preconceive it as a general impression. In other words, you look at it writ large, you look at the thing as a whole, and just look at it and look at it until you begin to realize you're beginning to understand it, you're beginning to feel it, you're beginning to see it, sense it, in a sense, own it, right? Uh, now, that isn't, when I say it now, we as impressionists aren't talking about it as objects. That would multiply your task beyond probably human capacity. So what we're trying to see is the general impression. The, the, so it's the big look, the big look, the big appearances. This is an appearance-based idea, right? So you're supposed to preconceive that, which means we're talking about the whole set of the visual elements, not the objects themselves, which gets to the third point. So then the fourth point is see nature as if a painting already. Now, this is a point you really have to take into consideration when you're looking at it. If you don't reduce it to a simultaneity of this, you don't go zooming in and zooming out and zooming in and zooming out, but maintain the, again, that, which I didn't mention there, but it's the screen. You look, don't look past the picture plane. There is a picture plane. Everything, every, all, every note up there just sort of comes up and sits on this picture plane, right? Just pop, 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 just as if it were a painting, right? It just comes up and sits on that screen. There is no in, there is no back, there is no knowledge of that sort. It's just the notes in their relationships. And if you do them well, you're going to get that, what, what they're actually doing, going in and going back. You know what I mean? And get, having relationships that way. But um, so you ha that's, that's, again, where the capacity is to see it already as just a painting. And a painting just has what? Color notes. You know, values, colors, places. That same old line that you heard, I think, one of those quotes last week. Um, it's just the right color, the right value, and the right place. So use your blurred eye. This is my next point. Use your blurred eye to, to see the, 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 I'm calling the grand order of the effects and the major masses, okay? If you don't blur your eye, um, there will be, uh, um, it, it's not as easy to understand what are the primary effects. And in a grand field, your overall, your overall field is, a, is, is functioning on the basis of who's on first, who's second, who's third, and that sort of thing, right? And start a sort of visual strength to your eye. Well, that's a function. That great big impression has everything to do with visual order. And that is the order visual that we're talking about. You blow your eye. But you also get that extra bonus, which is the sergeant talks about, of you'll begin to see the thing as ma having major masses. You'll see a lot of subdivisions of middle tone masses, for example, just joining this general mass. And you'll start seeing the picture subdividing. That that's a piece of the big of the big look, right? Is that unity of those larger masses? It's real. It's real stuff. You look with your eyes, you'll see it. 
but blurring helps you to grasp that. Okay. Uh, now, there's this question of uh, anchoring. And I'll read, just read the line again. Anchoring, establishing bases or bases, and then uh, constantly referring to these key things. Now, this is a way to maintain the, uh, the big look, right? If you always refer back to the, to the lightest light, and the darkest dark. If you're always referring to those, you will land your players in the right place and thereby participate in maintaining the big relationships, which will participate in giving you the big look. Now, it isn't the big look, and the mechanics aren't going to get you there, but we'll talk about that in a second. It's not just a pure mechanics problem. You actually have to pre-own it and pre be, be aware of it uh, a priori in your eyes. That note, and up in point two here, that idea of preconceiving, that's, that's Angian, right? preconceive it. So he says preconceive the thing. Well, he, and, or you'll be pushing shapes around. Well, that has to do with drawing. Now we're saying preconceive the general impression. Preconceive the general impression. In other words, get, look at it, look at it, look at it until you really have an awareness, a, a concept of it, an idea of it, right? It's not like you're going to own it in, in little ways. And that's why you have to look at it longer because you've got to get a sense of it, okay? And the sense of it is what's going to be that preconceived. And the sense of that thing you know, it's when you're seeing that way, when you're seeing the thing just whole, when your eyes are simultaneous, and then nobody's looking in, zooming in, looking at, look, confusing yourself with a thousand little points, but you're seeing the thing as one whole, that's what's going to give you that, that's what you're going to be preconceiving. You're going to be trying to hold that idea of how this all hangs together, or, that, or, or how it feels as it hangs together, as you see it as one. So preconceiving is such a huge, huge thing. So let's go on to the next set of points. I'll go back to that image again, and we'll just talk about stuff as it relates, uh, you know, as it comes up, things that we may have already referred to, so we might go through this whole list twice. So you have to, uh, see, so this whole idea of the back straggler that you hear about, uh, the back straggler is that part of your picture that's least like when you're watching, when you're watching the whole ensemble. But to do that, you have to be watching your own canvas as a whole. So you begin to put notes down. As soon as you put two or three notes down, you watch and see if they hang together in unity. Rather, in the same way nature does, even when you're just being piecemeal at the beginning, you can't put down everything at once. You'd wind up with a big sloppy mess if you did. But, uh, but as you go along, you'll even get three or four things on there, and you must immediately check them on your canvas and watch to see if they're maintaining their unity with each other as you perceive them uh, while you're watching the thing as a whole. Um, and then again, that thing, don't trust this process of first do this and then do that and think, think, think things are just going to come out okay. You, I use that word, don't abnegate responsibility to pre-own, to grasp, to see, to preconceive. <laughs> don't, don't fail to do that. You're the owner of this thing. You're t you have to take responsibility. There's no method that's going to win. It's going to get you. It's going to deliver the... Deliver your, oh, what's the right word, over the home plate of life? Spitballed over the home plate of life, yeah. Um, and then the next point, as you can see, is work the relationship. I know you guys probably have points, questions to ask at any of these points. Feel free to send me another question or whatever. Or, by the way, when we are going to be doing this uh, live one in a sort of week or maybe or so, uh, I hope to get that going. Oh, my God, I've sort of forgotten about it. Uh, but you have a chance to revisit these things, and I can be more specific. I really like it, the banter, the back and forth, and you say, but did you mean this? But you, did you say it like this? But I thought you meant, you know, that stuff is really, really helpful to nail this stuff down. So take advantage of that in the live thing, you know. Um, don't just come in with empty hands. You, you, you might have already, we might have already been discussing something that you can then, that you can then um, 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 if, um, um, have us develop before you. Um, so now, now the rest of this is about relationships, right? Everything is relational. The whole, the general ensemble, its unity is a function of the relationships of the parts. I think I say that down somewhere else, maybe earlier. But the the unity is is that the parts are all right in relation to each other, right? We get that. So the idea is that you have to be able to do relationships. When I say on all levels, from the first to the last, well, all levels meaning when you have two things, you first put down two notes. Just say it's going to be the, something that will help you with the composition, the top and the bottom placements, these, these first effects. You correct all the things you can to make them as like as you can, right? 
But then as you add three and four, keep watching the whole set of everything you keep adding, watching the whole set. Don't just look at the new thing you just added and see if that's good to something. But watch it into the whole, watch the whole. And again, if you haven't visited the whole and, and aren't trying to maintain the whole and try bringing, into, bringing everything into harmony with that big impression, uh, this won't work out. You can't do it in a lazy way. This takes, this takes a serious effort of the will and a focus um, so, um, again, these, these ideas just work for you if you're a hard worker, you know, I can't, I can't make this stuff easy in one sense. I can't, I'm, I'm giving, you, know, you could say I'm giving it to you free of charge, but you've got to work it out. You've got to work it out. All right. So in that same way, nothing, you do nothing for itself. Everything is only done for the other part. So when you put this, well, let's see when we talk about what's the most chromatic note, each of the notes you add to it, they can't become more chromatic than that first note. You can't have something that's sight size true and have something else that can't be made sight size true and think that you're going to have a visual unity. You're not going to have the big look by doing that. You're going to have a false set of relationships. So everything you put in there has got to be a, in a function with the whole. And uh, I'm, this simply is telling you that whenever you put anything in, make sure you're looking relationally and you make sure you're tying it onto as many relationships as you can. It'll have, every spot you put down, every note you put down, will have a value relationship to something, a color relationship to something, a location relationship to something, and so it'll go, okay? And, um, and then so Benson, ben, Benson is always talking about designing. And of course, from the very beginning to the end, what design implies, that, that idea of composition, he's using it like the bigger idea. But that implies the inner relationships of things which are essential in the big look. I mean, your design, the big look contains your design. And so what you're doing is, is you're aware of how the parts interplay with each other and you begin, you're, you're aware of how they are making the design. Of course, you have to grasp the design too. That's just one of those things. But um, let's not go further into that one. But just remember that every mark you make, if it's, if it's related to things, will deliver information to you about, oh, Oh, that's why this is thing is so beautiful. Oh, I begin to see if you if you say if you just have angular things. I'll talk about it in the picture. Let me just do that. Um, the design, the always design. Maybe I should just look at the picture with that in mind and skip the rest for a second. Um, and let's give us the laser thing here. But you see, you could take something as simple as an angle like this right here. And if you're, if you're in the mentality of being a, a relational person, you'll actually become aware of how that angle relates to, say, this angle right here. And there's a definite relationship to it. And there's a definite relationship between this angle and, say, an angle like this. This set of points make an angle. And so what I'm suggesting to you, or even to this angle right through here, this longer gesture, what I'm suggesting to you is that this is design as well as it's... So you can see the relationships are you know, the, 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 the design is the relationship. How else can we say it? Uh, and that, by the way, so the next quote I have for you is from Paxton. And he's saying, well, if you have a note, if you're painting a note, say a note like this one here, look around to see where else it may be showing up in your canvas. It might show up here again or here. Just look around to see where else you see it, where else you see that note. Well, that has everything to do with the thing as a whole, the big look. If you fail to do those kinds of relationships, you won't get the big look. You won't get the you won't get the relational unity. Um, so let's see what point I left out. Um, um, so the truth is in the relationship, so that you get all that stuff. Yeah. So um, let's just talk about this thing in a large way. This, First of all, let me go back just for a second to the question, what, what's the best way to maintain the big look in a painting? So maintaining the big look, that's an interesting question, right? So once you have something laid out there and it's got the big look, all you have to do is, no matter what you put down, is make sure that it's, it's right in relation to all the other parts. That would be the very simple answer to that question. But uh, maintaining the big look, but if you mean getting the big look, that's what I was trying to show you. You have to get all these relationships right. The big look is the relationships, right? It's the rightness of the world relationally. Just the sheer sizes of certain things to each other. Uh, but we're talking about the big impression, right? The big look, the big look. That just means the truth, the harmony of the picture. That's what the big look is. It's how it hangs together. And so the fundamental answer to the whole thing is, can you, how, can you keep watching? Can you just do good relationships and watch 
the grand relationship, the grand harmony, grand unity. Just keep watching that as you do all of your little relationships. You will find, in, in a purely mechanical way, that if you can get the relationship of, of let's see if I can find there it is, if you can get the relationship of this thing right to this and to this and to this, just say, think of these as maybe lights. If you can get the relationships of these things to each other, you'll begin to see that what else could you have but the big look, right? The big impression. Now, again, Kevin, if you mean something different from what I mean when I say the big look, and I just mean the big general impression, uh, if you mean something different, ask me again to put this forward as a different question in the next one. But as I said before, what's, what you're finding in painting is you're finding um, that things either all hang together, as our founders said, or they hang separately. Um, that's a, as the founders of the U.S. Uh, Constitution <laughs> said, <laughs> as they were creating this new, uh, this new uh, government born in the mentality of freedom and individual sovereignty. Um, they, they knew that for them to survive in, in the face of great British power, they had to hang together. <laughs> well, we're talking about this grand unity of, uh, of, of colonies in this, uh, you know, our series of states in this country. And, uh, and, but here we're talking about the harmony of the parts of the painting. So you see the, the greens. Let's just talk about the greens for a second. See this green here? And there's this green here, and there's this green over here. And you could talk about variations down through green, uh, if you want to call them variations in, to, all the way to turquoise or whatever as a color. But you see that the big impression, the big look, is having those things right in relation to each other. Having the edge relationships right in relation to each other. This is, that, that continuity is, is what delivers the big look. So all you have to do is every time you paint something is make sure every time you're putting some new thing down, and of course we do things in the order visual so that we have these anchor things set up right from the beginning. We do it. So if this is our lightest light or chief effect or whatever, we don't let anybody get past it. We get all the other guys. Whatever we say it is, by the way, I just have my wand there at the moment. But whatever we say it is, all the other relationships go to it, right? If that's your, say, say that's your lightest light or, so, or say this is your lightest light, whatever. Uh, every single one of your values goes back and says, how do I relate to that? And most notably, the light. So, they, so you're always doing this to this. You're always doing this relational thing. But so the main, the maintenance of the big look, though, what the, the one thing I'd simply throw at you as a fundamental is just it has to show up on your canvas. If you're putting notes down on your canvas and you don't see that they're harmonizing as they do in nature, even while the canvas has still got a lot of white in it, uh, you're not maintaining what we would call the, the embryonic form of the big look. And by the time you get to the point where this canvas is covered for the first time, you're going to have chaos beyond your control. And uh, so, but maintaining is a kind of a big word, though. That's why we do st the starts we do are all about getting the big the big relationships. But in that case, as I said, it's the big relationships. We're not doing a lots and lots of little things. So your question might have been: So when we go to do all the little things, how do we maintain the unity of the big ones? And that's a profoundly right question. I mean, that's always that question about how do you stay with what you set up. So we did go, we go out of our way to make a start that contains the, the unity of the, of the big relationships uh, that, that, that actually feels like, well, this is, that, this is that painting. Yeah, I can see it already, and it's not even noodled up. And, uh, and, and, and of course, assuming you are going to want to noodle it up more than you just did, uh, you'd say, then how do you maintain? That's when the word maintain comes in. Then you'd say, how do you maintain the unity? But you'll maintain that big look by knowing who your keys are. I don't know if I wrote that in there. If I did, I overlooked it. But this anchoring idea, this idea of creating the bases. So that's why your lightest light is so important. That's why establishing the relationship of this thing is a color. So that is a, if, to, in relation to all these other things, that is the most yellow. But all these things are, these are, or, or whatever your sharpest edges in a painting, all these things are anchors from which you never deviate, you're always keying yourself. So if you keying, if you're saying this is my lightest light, you don't let anything get past that. You're keying to that. And so everything is, every little thing you do then, you won't do, be doing little funny things in here and having them go beyond what will still maintain that as the big unity. One of the things that people do sometimes is they'll set up a, a spot like this here and get it really good as, as light in relation to the whole. And then what they'll do is they'll go inside there and make all these little pieces like sight size. And they'll, before they know it, all these little darks in here 
will start turning this whole thing into the wrong value. Well, you'll find that you can put some darks in there, but you'll have to counter them with lights in there. The counter, the light, the dark, the light, the dark is what's going to maintain the value of this thing at the right place. But you just have to make sure that you know what value that's supposed to be as a general value to the whole. And then whenever you go in there, and this is where the gamma rule of see with how little you can make those variations. So you want to maintain the unity of that general impression. And so that might be what you mean by the big look. So you have this big set of relationships, and now you're going to go inside here. And then you just simply, what you will simply have to do is do those things and then look at them and see if they've all of a sudden broken the unity, if they've broken out of the big look, out of the big impression. If they have, you say, okay, then I've got to do them with less. I've got to find the darks are too dark, something's, something's funny in here. So you can't have these guys isolating themselves in ways that destroy the big stuff. And that's where piecemeal work it takes you every time. If you just say, now I can go, and I had tried this, by the way, as a student of painting. I would go inside and say, now I can just noodle this, this thing up. And I would do it and I'd create so many problems. And the whole painting would fall apart. But what you'll find is the best way to maintain that big look is to make sure you just do the next order of things in this area as opposed to simply doing the area, do the next order of things. It'll still be that order of things will take in a lot of stuff in this area, but I say the next order of things, meaning the high contrast, uh, sharp-edged players are the first order of business, that things have come flying to your eyes. And then there are second ones and third ones, you know, so you could say some, some, some of these certain effects in here are some tertiary, secondary or tertiary level of order, but the minor folds down in through here are very low level things. And so what you'll want to do is, if you recognize these are low level, which is why you didn't do them in the first place, if you realize these are low level, then you'll know not to bring them up and suddenly look into them. And this is where concepts like looking in, don't be looking in. You don't look in and then try to force every little thing up because it will destroy what we just talked about, the big look. It'll destroy the big unity, right? Well, that's the way the conversation goes. So if you want more out of that, um, or if you want me to clarify things, please guys get back to me. And I really would like you to, if any of you want to, to go ahead and get to me at the um, live thing, which we're trying to do in a, maybe a week or more, uh, and, um, and really, uh, uh, really push me around on this one, okay? I really want to be understood here. This is no, there's, yeah, there's no magic here. There's no talent here. This is just ideas. This is just activity, organized activities, right? Systematic behaviors. So it's a great question, Kevin. And obviously, you've done enough painting to know that it's an important one. And, uh, and you're going to be just fine in about a minute, so to speak. But everything has to do with understanding the big relationships from the very beginning and maintaining them, having them sitting on your canvas. And so you can see them. And then no matter what you add to your canvas, you go back and review them to the whole and uh, make sure they maintain their place in the whole. All right. But that's like saying, you said, how do you maintain? Well, just make sure they maintain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How helpful is that, right, guys? Anyway, all right, we'll stop at that. Um, I'm managing to stand for 30 minutes for the most part. That's very nice. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that. And uh, and uh, but let's 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 push this conversation, and we can push it with this image on the screen if you want to when we get around to that. This thing is still slightly in the state of being worked on, so it's not in the marketplace yet. But um, so so uh, it's fun for me to to talk about it in relation to you know with other voices, with other, other eyes on it. All right. Okay, for now then, um, the big look, huge, hugely important, big stuff, uh, good question. And we'll see you all next week. I hope you have a great day keeping the big look. <laughs> Getting the big look and then maintaining it. Yeah. All right. So next time.